All right, so I thought we'd have a look at solving vector problems or an example of it, one that involves force, mass, acceleration, and linear motion, and obviously resolving vectors. So in this one, we're told that a skateboarder has a total mass of 70 kilograms, and he starts from rest at the top of a ramp and accelerates down it. So if we draw a little diagram to represent the information we have so far, so that's our ramp there. Our skateboarder is at the top of it, like so. And he's got a mass of 70 kilograms. And the ramp is 25 meters long. So that means from here down to here, 25 meters. And it's at an angle of 20 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, so I'll draw in, I'll make a triangle out of that. Like so. And he has a velocity of 12.2 meters per second at the bottom of the ramp. So when he gets down to this point, that's his velocity. And they ask you to calculate the average acceleration of the skateboarder on the ramp. All right, so let's have a look at more so at the figures of what we have. So we're told he starts from rest at the top. So when he's here, his initial velocity u is equal to zero meters per second. And when he gets down to the bottom, his velocity then is 12.2 meters per second. So we can write that as V is equal to 12.2 meters per second. And the ramp is 25 meters long. So from here to here, he's had a displacement of S is equal to 25 meters. And we're looking for his average acceleration A. So we've got three equations we can use for linear motion. I might write them in a different colour, in black. So V is equal to U plus AT. S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared. And V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. And we have to choose one of these in order to calculate A. So you'll notice that in the two first ones here, they both have T in them, but we don't have any time, that's also an unknown. So we're gonna use this equation here because we have everything else in it except for A. So we can use that one to solve A. Solve for A. So we'll start by filling out what we know. So we have V squared, so that's 12 squared is equal to U squared, so that's zero to be squared, plus two times A, we don't know it, so we'll leave it as it is times our displacement, which is 25. All right, and we'll start by working out what we can. So 12.2 squared, that is 148.84. That's equal to zero squared is zero, plus two times 25 is 50, and then times our acceleration. Then we can divide both sides by 50. So we can say 148.84 over 50 is equal to our acceleration. And that's equal to, so if we divide our answer by 50, that's equal to an acceleration of 2.9768 meters per second squared. But we can round that up to 2.98 meters per second squared. And that there is our answer to part one. Okay, and then they go on to ask us to calculate the component of the skateboarder's weight that is parallel to the ramp. Right, so let's go back up to our diagram up here. So, first of all, where does our skateboarder's weight go? So his weight goes straight down and we'll denote that by W. What is his weight? Well, we're told his mass is 70 kilograms. And we're familiar with the formula F is equal to MA. So the force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we can use this to write that weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. 
So weight is due to our mass being accelerated down by gravity. So therefore we can say that our, his weight is 70 times acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So that's 9.8. And that's 686 newtons because weight is a force so we measure it in newtons all right so we have w there now we have to mark in where his parallel component and his perpendicular component might be so perpendicular means at right angles so that means that if his his perpendicular component to the ramp will be where it makes a 90 degree angle with the ramp like that so there's a 90 degree angle in there so that's his perpendicular component and this symbol here is for perpendicular that's why i have it just under the w to show it's his perpen it's the perpendicular component of his weight right parallel then means to have the same slope. So his parallel component to the ramp would have to have the same slope as the ramp. So it has to go down this way, like so. Like that. Okay, now you'll notice here that if you look at this triangle, so the one formed by his weight and the, we and the rest of the ramp, this is at right angles here. And there's 180 degrees in a triangle. So that means that 20 plus 90 must leave me with 110. So that means that this last angle up here must be 70 degrees. And then what we can do is we can make a right angle triangle with his components here. So the length of this side is equal to the perpendicular magnitude. Do you like that? So that's equal to the perpendicular and likewise this bit here is equal to the parallel component. And then we have another right angle in here. So this right here is a right angle triangle and that's what we're going to focus on to get the parallel component. So if we have a look at this angle in here, we know that cos of 70 is equal to the adjacent side, which is the parallel component over the hypotenuse, which is our weight in this case. And that is 686 newtons because we worked that out before. So that means that the parallel component is equal to 686 times cos of 70. So we can say that the parallel component then is equal to 686 times cos of 70 which is 234.63 newtons. And that is our answer for part two. All right, part three, the force of friction acting on the skateboarder on the ramp. So my diagram's looking a bit hefty there, so I might redraw it very quickly. And I'll draw in all the forces we know then, or that we've worked out so far. Okay, so again, our little skateboarder, there he is. And then we know that he now has, so the, his weight going down the ramp to this way, so the part or the parallel component of his weight to the ramp we got that to be 234.63 newtons. 
And now we have to focus on finding the force of friction, which I'm going to call Fk. Which is acting against him. So earlier on in part one, we discovered that his acceleration was 2.98 meters per second squared. And we know he has a mass of 70 kilograms. So if we plug that into the formula F is equal to MA to find his force due to his acceleration going down the ramp. So that's equal to 70 times 2.98. That's 208.6 newtons. Mm -mm. So that means that the difference between his parallel component of his weight going down the ramp and the force he has on his skateboard going down due to his acceleration there must be equal friction. So that means we have 234.63 minus 208.6 and that's 26.03 newtons. And that is our answer for part three.